this is recording. Hi guys, welcome to this edition of Freedom Nom Nom. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, we will be making a shepherd's pie today. Uh, it'll be a paleo shepherd's pie, which basically just means instead of potatoes, which are high in starch and uh, tend to spike your glucose, I'm gonna be making it with a collie mash that is going to have a lot of cheese and cream and butter in it because these things Contrary to what you have been told by the USDA and the government and the people who apparently want to keep you sick instead of healthy, uh, fat is not bad for you. Uh, there are certain fats that are in fact good for you, butter, cream, cheese, these are not the evils we were taught to be. And honestly, I have to tell you, when I went on my journey to becoming a healthier me, um, I, 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 you know, the biggest conditioning I had to get around was this notion that, you know, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, low fat was what we were told we should eat, everything was, uh, you know, told to us that, you know, don't eat high fats, fats are bad for you, uh, bacon's bad for you, eggs bad for you, pork, I remember in South Africa they told us was bad for us, and um, turns out, nope. They were wrong. So the government is generally wrong about everything. I would say just don't listen to anything they have to say, but that's a conversation for another day. Uh, my name is Carla Garrick. Welcome to Freedom Nom Nom. Today we will be making a paleo shepherd's pie. So what do we need for this experiment today? I have some uh, local lamb, lamb from uh, my friend who harvests them in Goffstown. This is some of the best lamb I've had outside South Africa, so pretty excited about that. I have Bardo Farm ground beef. Uh, for those of you following along, no, I just got half a cow delivered. This is my Bardo Farm t-shirt. Bardo Farm is up here in Croydon, New Hampshire. Their produce uh, especially their meats, porks, and beef. Delicious! They also get everything, as you can see here. They are in the Essential AF crew. I believe, as they believe, that we are all essential and that the government doesn't get to say they're essential and we're not, especially when we're paying the bills. So, Paleo today, I actually do have some pork out as well. This is also Barda Farm pork, also delicious. But I think I'm gonna do a ground beef and lamb one to, yeah, maybe I'll do all of them. No, I'll just do those. Otherwise, this is gonna make the pans too big and then it gets complicated in a whole new way. So I'm gonna put this back in the fridge and then we will get started. So, what are we gonna do? What does Carla always do? She turns on the oven first. So, we're putting the oven on 375. For those of you following along, you will discover that I basically try to do everything in as few steps as possible with as few ingredients as possible to make it tasty with as little stuff to remember as possible. So almost everything I bake, I bake at 375 and just adjust, adjust the, um, the time according to it. And uh, little known secret, because I grew up in South Africa where we had Celsius, I didn't cook a lot in South Africa because I moved to the States when I was around 24 and I'd been in law school and all these things, so that had never really been my focus until later in life. But because of the change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, I don't know, something just, it didn't really go in. So I was like, ah, I'm not gonna learn everything again, I'll just go with 375 and work around that. Now we'll use the broil from time to time and if I'm obviously baking or like making real recipes and not Carla's short and easy hacks then uh, I might adjust it. Here on the pan uh, once again we have as I always do a uh, nicely seasoned uh, iron skillet. I recommend if you don't have one of these to get one. Uh, start with one, treat it with love. Never, ever, 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 ever wash a skillet with soap. In fact, I saw a meme this week that said, um, 
It was a, it was a skillet with the don't tread on me sort of yellow uh, design logo and it just said don't soap me and I was like don't soap it. So you always want to treat these with love basically just um, clean them out with uh, water and then from time to time treat them uh, to season them and to keep that sort of it's really just like a you're creating your own uh, nonstick pan. So right now what I'm doing is I am putting uh, red, uh, bacon fat that I save when I make bacon, bardo bacon, when I make bacon, I um, save it in these jars and then I reuse them as my base fat for a lot of my dishes. Uh, I'm gonna get a cutting board here. I'm gonna get a bowl for the blood, uh, the blood of the meat for the puppy dog. Uh, she also gets a little bit of special treatment. If there's any extra we like to share. Can't let that do its magic. Um, all right, I do have garlic. So basically in my paleo shepherd's pie, beef, lamb, shepherd's pie with uh, paleo mash, I need to get the cauliflower. I'm just going to make it in the microwave to cook it. Um, I know some people are like microwaves are the devil. I'm not sure if that's the case. Uh, I grew up with one. I do use it fairly sparingly and for the most part try not to stand right in front of it. I don't know, but I'm sure it's I'm not sure it's fine, but you know what? It's handy and life is trade-off, so if that's what's gonna kill me, I guess that's what's gonna, something's gonna get you, right? So you may as well live. Um, okay, so this technical technique here is uh, get the cauliflower's little back end out. Uh, Miss Schmelly just came over, so she must know that there is about to be some a uh, little bit of meat for her. I'm just gonna break these into like bigger floret chunks. Uh, basically, we're just gonna microwave these. There's a little brown spot in here, so I'll probably just break that off. Um, and I'm just gonna get this. Ooh, there's another brown spot. So just making sure, you know, it's all fresh and nice and good. Um, that bacon grease is starting to smell good, so it might be ready for the first of the meat in a bit. Um, all right, so let's pour some water, just a little bit of water in here from my uh, mountain water spring bubbler over here and that's just a little bit of water at the bottom just to kind of help it steam a little I guess. Now I'm just going to zap this in the microwave probably for I don't know three four five minutes. Let's say five minutes. So five minutes 14 seconds is what's happening there right now. I am all right so I'm going to add first this plate, you know, I cleaned all of this stuff after that first episode, um, and since then, this thing's been popping out all the time. It's very annoying, and I'll probably have to have it fixed at some stage. So, I'm going to put just some garlic in here. Uh, I'm going to add a shallot as well. Shallots are something that, honestly, are not always... I suspect I shouldn't be eating onion, and I've actually eliminated onion for the most part, but I just can't resist. So, you know, again, life's about trade-offs, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna put all of that over there. Let's cut this. I'm just gonna do this in kind of loose dice, I guess. Um, And honestly, this shepherd's pie, you know, the traditional shepherd's pie is literally, as it says, it was a pie for shepherds. Or maybe I'm making that up. I don't remember. I should have looked up some notes again. Um, 
about a tablespoon of garlic to go in with that shallot and the fat. The plates on three, I'm just gonna let that brown up and get fragrant quickly and then we will add the meat um, over here. Let's, it's not very bloody, so maybe we'll try it with this lamb and see if that one comes out. Um, for those of you who are new to working in the kitchen, one of the things I really like about cooking is it's, I mean, it's life and death. It's dangerous stuff. You're working with heat. You're working with knives. You want to be mindful about what you're doing. Like if you are uh, showing this to your kids, maybe. Uh, one of the things with knife skills that you want to be doing is like I was cutting that, you always want to cut away from yourself so that you don't cut this way and something slips and then you gut yourself in the tummy. Uh, but once you learn that, you know, you're all good. Now here's the irony, right? America has moved towards this like insane safetyism. Everyone's so scared of everything. And I'm like, let's get over that. Let's start just um, living again and part of that I think is cooking whole real foods with um, with liberty and love oh that could maybe be a good tagline whole whole foods with liberty and love I like it all right so I'm adding some meat here um, that was the lamb now we're gonna add the beef Miss Nelly is very eager here under me. There's not a lot of blood in this, um, in this, uh -oh. better way to do this, hold on. Um, all right, so wash these afterwards. Um, Cause I'm just grabbing them with dirty hands. But Miss Nelly seems very insistent. That she wants a little piece of So, what's the rule? Share the love. All right, we're going to share the love. She's going to be happy about that. up to three and a half, four. Um, basically, this is going to be beef and lamb, salt, pepper, garlic salt, uh, garlic powder. I don't know why I always say garlic salt, but I mean powder. So garlic powder, just for a little flavoring. Everyone knows I always put some of that in. We're going to salt and pepper. I do mine with a thyme. And I just noticed actually that I have fresh thyme starting to come up. Um, and I put, oh wow, my chives are actually also, they look like they might flower. I haven't been out that way in a few days. Um, so, okay, so basic seasoning, oil, salt, pepper. Uh, personally, I like some garlic powder as well. I did something weird with my onion garlic, my onion powder, I mixed two brands and now it just smells weird to me, so I need to reorder more. So basically all we're doing in the pan here right now is we are browning the meat. And I, I mean this is literally like five ingredients, right? It's the meat, it's the basic flavoring stuff, it's carrots, I use frozen peas, Shoot me, it's that time of year. Uh, hopefully when the peas are in season, I do use uh, fresh peas, but so this, I'm just feeling it can be zapped a little longer. Um, and this is of course gonna form the basis of the collie mash. So I'm gonna do that for three more minutes and check it then. Um, I'm gonna get the peas out of the freezer. Oh God, I'm like, please let me have peas. Peas, 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 we have peas. And honestly, do you see these three carrots I have? So these carrots came very kindly from my neighbor um, who I messaged and he had come over with his uh, friend on Monday night and 
I cooked them a meal. Uh, it was pretty good, except the salmon was raw, so <laughs> I didn't check it. I just assumed I worked my magic, and that was a little presumptuous. Uh, so they had to wait, but that menu was, it's actually stuffed cabbage um, with the, the that um, stew I made a couple of weeks ago. So it was, uh, I used that for a stuffed cabbage starter, and then we did a salmon asparagus um, pe pesto with pesto, and then a baked apple dessert. It was all quite yummy. But anyway, you have your neighbors over for dinner so that when you need a carrot, they can bring you one. So thank you, Brink. Um, all right, I'm just gonna let these peas sit around here. They don't really have to defrost. I'll put them in whole um, and frozen over in our pan. We're just gonna keep mixing this to allow the meat to brown. Um, And do its thing. As I mentioned, I have um, I, I use time in it. I'm going to use dry time because I didn't harvest any of the fresh time yet. Um, and honestly, they still look a little uh, not quite ready. So. I do like a handful, maybe like a, just a tablespoon or a stacked teaspoon maybe of thyme. It's just going to go in there as well. Um, and I'm going to wash and then chop the carrots. And I'm going to clear the counter so that we can um, work the magic with the collie mash. Um, all right, so Ms. who is back for more, uh, does love herself a carrot. So hopefully she'll take that, good girl. And um, go eat it. Go. Huh? Oh, you're going to eat it there. Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 Oh, now it's stuck, mommy. Now it's stuck, mommy. Oh, get it, get it, get it. All right, she's got that. Um, all right, we'll chop these quick. So these are cut in about, I guess, half an inch, inch, I don't know, 10 millimeters, how about that, a centimeter of uh, carrot blocks. Take this little part out. I, of course, am saving most of that for a stock later. Um, I'll slow through it a little bit. All right. All right, so this is close to brown. Now before I put, I wait till the meat's like quite brown to put in the carrots and then I wait a little bit for the peas. But every one of my recipes has a secret ingredient that obviously is not gonna be that secret anymore. For this one, it is the Unpronounceable. I don't even know how to say it. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna say it in Afrikaans because then, ha, ha, ha you can't judge me. Uh, Wooster sauce in Afrikaans. So it's Worcestershire sauce in English. I don't know, but anyway, this is the secret to a good shepherd's pie. I'm gonna put mine in now, even though the meat's not 100% brown. It's pretty close. It's what I would say probably at a medium right now if, if we were talking um, in, in that kind of terms. I like, to, I like to put a, so the secret ingredient in the secret ingredient is anchovy actually. And that's what gives it that sort of salty umami deliciousness. So this, um, you know, 
it's not coming out that fast, so I know that looks like a crazy pour, but you know, it's, um, I like to get it in there and actually let it cook off a little bit so that it has that, um, that flavor gets in there, but it's not, um, it's got a little bit of a vinegary, fishy, uh, I mean, it's a full and mommy, right? Like it's, it's an awesome thing. Uh, but I'm going to let that cook off a little bit. So what I need here now, this is uh, the timing issues. Um, I'm actually going to throw in the carrots um, and just let them sit on top for right now. I'm not going to mix them in yet while the uh, sauce cooks off. But um, that will just free up some space here. So I need my food processor. And I'm going to use the one with the chopper, I'm the big one. And, you know, my coffee mashes I make various different ways uh, depending on what's in the house. I know I don't have Parmesan um, and so I'm probably going to use a little cheddar. I am using cream cheese, so this is just normal Philly cream cheese. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of butter. Uh, actually, I'm going to get salt and butter. I'm going to put a little mustard in. All right, so got to plug this puppy in. This is, I mean, it's not 100% cooked. It's still pretty al dente, but it's going to go in the oven, so I don't like to overcook anything, so I'll just start there, and then we can figure it out. Um, you don't want to crowd this too much, so I don't, I don't um, make it all the way full and kind of do it in two batches and just scoop half of it into a bowl. With everything, seasoning is key. Dunk, dunk, dunk. All right, this plate I'm going to turn down to a two that is boiling off nicely. The sauce, I'm going to mix in the carrots here. I'm just going to let that, this will probably take a couple of like two minutes or so, five minutes or so. So, all right, so where'd my salt go? I literally run off with it. All right, so. A little bit of butter, all right. Um, mm -hmm. Put it in the cabinet, not where it's supposed to be. All right, salt. I do some garlic powder. Okay. And then I'm gonna do like half this cream cheese in this batch and probably the other half in the other one. So, why is my food delicious? Because it's filled with delicious stuff. Um, so I'm gonna break this around. Sometimes I'll just like pour in cream, but since I'm using the cream cheese, I might uh, not also do that. But maybe I will. All right, so we're gonna zap this on here. Like that, start to work its magic. A little bit of cream is going to go in there just to give it a um, little bit of liquid to make it, you know, more creamy, I guess. do the taste test right so this is not smooth yet but the flavoring is there um, um, you know, it's gonna be a little strange because I think it wasn't quite as
Mm, that tastes pretty good. I'm gonna take these frozen peas. These frozen peas are just gonna go in here too. I'm gonna let them sit on the top as well for just a bit. Um, get them, I'll stir them in in a second. I'm just gonna let that go a little longer. Um, I'll put some mustard in here too because when all else fails, add some mustard. Um, I'll do one. Ah! Tablespoon. And. smoothest I've ever made it and that's just purely because it wasn't super cooked. Mm, it's good though. And that's really all that matters, right? I mean, it's supposed to look good, of course. You eat with your eyes first, as the professionals say, but um, ultimately it's got to taste good and that's what I care about. And um, so I'm just going to do this second batch, sort of repeat the same story, um, and that's purely, there's no technical reason for that other than can't fit it all in there. Okay, so I'm going to stir this and stir the peas into it, and then I'm actually going to switch off the heat now. Um, I need to taste the meat to uh, just make sure how the seasoning is and if it's all good. So again, we have lamb and beef in here. Crumble that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Pretty much perfect. Oh, for my taste. I'm gonna add this hot stuff in here. Don't burn, don't burn. Now you remember there's a little bit of water at the bottom of this. So you do want to be careful that you don't like fry your fingers with boiling water. Um, I'm using a slotted spoon so that we try to transfer the water. Sometimes when I make this, I actually just put cream in the bottom, uh, and then I do transfer it with the hot cream. Uh, and maybe that was the special thing, but I was like, oh my god, these people are going to think all I eat is butter and cream and butter, and kind of true. Now, I'm exaggerating, right? But also, it's not bad for you. So you shouldn't like be like, oh my goodness, that's just terrible because it ain't. So this is cream cheese again, the second half of that. So you use almost a stick of cream cheese, I can't lie. Uh, or a like whole packet. Uh, Louie had eaten some earlier. Um, okay, wash my hands quick. And same process, right? So we're gonna do a little garlic powder, a little salt. I'm gonna put some pepper in this one because I didn't in the last batch. Um, and I do like pepper in this, but I like the little fine pepper. I have fine black pepper. That's not the, the store grater. I like to put like maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. That seems like a lot, but I don't know. Uh, all right, put some cream in here. And we're zap it on. This should be pretty much ready to get baked now. So how long did that take? Like, I mean, literally, they're like four steps. No one has an excuse not to be cooking at home. You should all be doing it. It's healthy, whole foods, and it will cure you. Like, if you've got ailments, if you have autoimmune anything, start cooking for yourself. Stop eating processed food and you will see a remarkable improvement in your health over time. And honestly, it's cheaper, it's better for you, it's better for... Okay, so there's this giant piece here that I'm just gonna break up. 
This one's a little soupy. That is also what happens if you do different batches and you can mix it together. first one and a little wetter. I think it's because I poured that cream straight in there and it was better cooked. So I am going to add these two together and then it should have the perfect consistency because we're on camera and I can call anything I want perfect. And on this happy Sunday, I'm going to call you perfect. Um, and honestly, if you guys start making these recipes and you let me know in the comments, uh, what worked, what didn't work, uh, how you make yours, if you make it differently. I'd love to know what you're up to in your keto and paleo kitchens. Um, Alright. And... That's the thing that's so exciting about this community to some extent, right? Like we all have these hero stories because so many of us had issues. We had either weight issues, emotional issues, uh, food issues. Uh, but they were all health related, right? Because like if something's not right with you, something's not right with you, and then you have to figure out what is it and what can I do about it? How can I proactively change my life for the better? And I proactively changed my life through uh, choosing to eat better. And then of course, uh, you know, I was a big wino. This would have been a cooking wine show. Um, Oh, and Schmelly, by the way, she loves cauliflower, so she's gonna lick out this, so, you know, you always share the love. All right, come over here, Pops. She's very excited. Right here, I am just mixing the two kinds together. Um, I will you can see here, too. So this is just, you know, basic cauliflower mash. This is a substitute for actual potato mash. Um, obviously potato is a vegetable, so I guess it's better than some stuff, but it really isn't. Uh, it has a high glycemic load, and if you are trying to watch what you're eating, this is a much better, healthier, tastier in my opinion, or equally tasty alternative. And the cool part is you don't get that like weird sluggishness that you get when you eat the wrong stuff. Your body will tell you. If you're eating a high carb meal, um, at, you know, and you're busy at work and whatever, and you hit that two o'clock crash because you had a sandwich or some pasta for lunch, that is literally your body telling you you're not fueling yourself with the right stuff. So what is the right stuff? More whole foods. Mm, that's really tasty. It's kind of like a little, sour note, which I think is coming from the mustard, um, and maybe from the cream cheese. Not sour, like real sour, just, um, it's actually surprisingly tasty. All right, so what we have, I think you can see here, but in case, we have in the skillet, we have this, um, Just basically chunky, rustic, huge skillet full of meat that is lamb and beef, local lamb, local beef, raised locally with love here in New Hampshire. Some carrots, some frozen peas, uh, a little bit of Worcester sauce, Worcester sauce, no, Worcestershire sauce, ah, whatever. Uh, Worcester sauce and Afrikaans, so uh, done Cagliari Cani. And on top of that, we are topping it off with a cauliflower mash. So the uh, technical technique here 
is you want to, well, one, you want to make sure, again, that things are sort of evenly distributed throughout the pan so that every bite is optimal. More or less, <laughs> maybe my secret ingredients is a little carless, but who knows. But that's also how we keep our immune systems healthy, right? Shouldn't be so scared of just normal germs and life and crap. All right, so I'm switching the plate off because we're pretty much done here. I'm gonna zap this collie mash on the top. I kind of like to start in the middle and kind of, you know, see if we can get it sort of equally distributed and then I'm gonna flatten it out in a little bit. Um, I'll put the last, the most in the middle so that if something goes wrong, at least it's flowing from the middle out, right? And we're just going to kind of press this down. Let's see here. All right. So we have enough to cover the pan, so that's always good. That's step number one of things that can go wrong. Okay. So you want to find those little spots where it it hasn't quite covered. Let's see if you can scooch some over for that. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's just a little bit here. I'm getting to so there and over there. All right, so now we have this beautiful collie mash on top of this uh, nicely prepared stuff. I'm going to do one last zap of salt across the top. Little for love, as I like to say. Plain Biki for I have a little of this uh, just pre-shredded two-state farmer shredded cheddar cheese. I'm going to put a, like a smattering, a smattering on top, like a big handful, just to kind of, uh, it helps it brown nicely and I mean, the, the collie mash should brown anyway because there's butter and fat and stuff in there, but this gives it a nice little extra crust. Uh, so usually when I say one handful, I mean two handfuls. Um, but, you know, also remember that this is across, you know, a, a large dish. We'll eat this probably three times. I'll make it once. Uh, this is something I love to make when I have friends over. It's super easy. It's delicious. It goes far. It's not that expensive to make. Um, and it's one of those dishes you could just get together around the family table and know that everything you're eating in a dish like this is good for you. And if you eat paleo or keto regularly, I don't even really try to do cheat dates anymore because honestly it just doesn't serve me and um, I find that cycle too hard. I just find it's easier to just kind of stick with the lifestyle. Um, then uh, this is, yeah, this is a great treat. So I'm gonna pop this in the preheated 375 oven. This will go in really, I mean, everything's cooked, right? So I'm gonna put this in for probably 25 minutes. And honestly, that's just really more to let it bake together. Everything's cooked. There's nothing that needs the time. The carrots really are the probably the, the one part that Sometimes if I'm super hungry, I only do it for 15 minutes and then the carrots are too hard. So I'm going to put it in for 25 to 30 minutes at 375. This is a beef lamb, local beef, local lamb, Bardo farm, who are essential as fuck, um, as we all are, uh, shepherd's pie and that'll be in the oven and we will report back later if it was a success all the pieces tasted good so i'm confident all together it's going to be delicious as well i'll serve this with a side salad that's a lot of food so i cook in batches so that i have things to eat 
during the week that I can just reheat uh, because I'm a busy lady. Uh, thank you so much for joining me again for another edition of Freedom Nom Nom. Freedom Nom Nom! Freedom Nom Nom! That's what my neighbor wants me to do. He gave me the carrots. I'm going to do it for today. Uh, you can find more recipes. Subscribe to my channel, Carla Garrick TV, or find me on Odyssey, Carla Garrick, G-E-R-I-C-K-E. -E. This was a lamb and beef shepherd's pie. Uh, I make real food with liberty and love. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. In the meanwhile, live free and thrive. Peace out.